Hey everybody, welcome. Today we're going to be messing with Rapido's FP9A and N scale. If you've got a locomotive that sounds like this, but you prefer that it sounds like this, keep watching. I'm going to give you two methods to get these things running as good as they look. Hey everybody, here it is, Rapido's FP9A on the workbench. Uh, cosmetically, this is an amazing looking model. Mechanically, however, there's some problems. We're going to address the problems. Some run well, some do not. We're going to go over both. Uh, in the box itself, you're going to find a parts bag. In the parts bag, there is a diaphragm. The diaphragm just simply goes over the back of the locomotive. You're also going to find sun shades. They go over the side windows. The side windows already have holes pre-drilled for those shades. There are eyebrow grabs. Those go above the windshields. They are aerospecific, so consult photos. It's also a Sinclair antenna, again, aerospecific. Now, these two little wee black bits here, took me a while to figure out what they are. They're steps for the front pilot. And the most important inclusion is this extra axle. This model is equipped with a traction tire right there. We're going to get rid of that. It's not 1975. We don't need traction tires in N-scale. However, if you do like traction tires and you want to pull unit trains with your Fs, extra traction tires are included in the parts bag. We're going to start off with the simple conversion here. We're going to just change out this traction tire. Uh, I think you should do this regardless of how well your locomotive runs. It's just going to add to the reliability and the electrical uh, pickup to the thing. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to have one that runs well, this is the only thing you're going to really have to do. So I'll show you real quick. How easy this is. The truck design is such that you don't even have to pull it out of the chassis. Uh, the side frame and the cover for the gearbox is all one piece and the entire assembly is kind of a slot and a tab construction. So there's tabs on the gearbox and slots that fit over top of those tabs and they are on the side frame assembly. So all you're going to do is you're going to take that truck and you pivot it out like this and you gently take a nice fine flat bladed screwdriver, get it underneath the lip like this and you just rotate and that's just going to pop off like that pull that cover now i've already done this one but i just want to show you how easy this is your traction tire just simply pops out you pop in the good axle and that truck just snaps back into place now my suggestion would be to start at the back and you get it over top of that tab pull it forward press down here once everything's lined up when you hear that click you're good to go all right, traction tires are gone, wheels are engaged. Let's get everything cleaned up here. We're gonna start off with some 99% isopropyl alcohol. Okay, you want this stuff uh, nice and strong. And you're gonna just splash a little bit over some paper towel. Lay the paper towel over some active track or test track. And then you're also gonna want a Minitrix wheel cleaner. So dial locomotive up to full throttle. And you're gonna lay the first truck into the grooves over the railhead, of course, on that paper towel. And the other truck is gonna to touch the contacts of the track let everything spin itself nice and clean. Now, some of these things, you can see here, there's all kinds of grunge on this paper towel. Some come clean from the factory, some do not. Once that's done, of course, do both ends. Uh, we're gonna take the Minitrix wheel cleaner, lay it down over the track. If you're not familiar with these things, it's just basically a plastic housing with uh, contact strips in the bottom and brass wires coming up through the top, nice and soft. It's a great way to get the grunge off of wheels as well. It's basically just polishing things up. For those of you with good runners, give her about an hour's break in time and it should be good to go. For the rest of us, let's get on to method number two. We're gonna get a little bit more involved. If you drew the short straw and you've got one of these things that's making a whole pile of noise, the next step is to remove body shell and go after the trucks themselves. What's happening is there's a harmonic vibration set up in the trucks because there's two contact points. Okay, I'll show you real quick here. You've got the tower it goes up to the worm gear, worm gear sits across here and it's sitting in the frame. And then you've got the contact strips here, okay? So with those contact strips in that tower, both trying to contact the bottom of the chassis, what's happening is you have no play back and forth here, okay? When the weight of the locomotive is down here, it's pushing one in an un unnatural way. Uh, the case that I found is it's actually pushing this axle down, this axle is left to float, and it's setting up a vibration. So we have to get the body shell off of this. I'll show you that real quick and then we'll uh, attack these trucks and get everything running nice and smooth. So it's a simple matter of a pair of nice sharp tweezers, pointy tweezers, and four toothpicks, okay? 
So we've got the fuel tank here. What we're gonna do is just take our tweezers. We're gonna go on each side of that fuel tank like this and just spread them apart. Put them between the sill and the chassis. You're gonna press out and work the tweezers down so that they stick between the shell and the chassis. Now on each end of the sill here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a toothpick and you're just gonna work it down like that and work it down like that. So the reason you wanna go on the end of the sill is that's where the uh, tabs are that hold this body shell in place. So flip over to the other side and we'll repeat there. So we're here like this, I'll just show you what I'm doing here, okay? Toothpick slides in and toothpick slides in. Remove tweezers, grab it by that fuel tank, just a gentle wiggle back and forth and everything comes out nicely just like that. All right, so this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Um, I don't suggest you do this if you don't feel comfortable taking apart little wee tiny things here. So a uh, bunch of screws holding everything in place here. So if you're gonna go after the back truck, you've got three screws to remove. You got a screw here and you've got a screw here. That's holding the speaker assembly in place. And then there's another screw underneath this tape. So this tape that's holding the board and all that stuff into place has to come off, okay? First though, we're gonna take care of this front truck. So, flat bladed screwdriver. This is just a simple clip that holds the truck in place. It snaps up and then it holds itself down here onto the body. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your screwdriver and you're gonna see a gap in there. You're gonna go down on an angle, just like this, okay? And again, tab and slot construction. Get that nice and straight. And you just pry out like this. And one side clips off. You go to the other side. The other side clips off. Okay. Pull that out. Now, what you want to be careful of, obviously, the wires. But you've got uh, bushings that sit down inside the gearbox over the end of your worm gear. Hold the worm gear with your tweezers like this, pull them out so that those bushings don't stick in the truck, okay? You want those bushings to stay on the worm gear. All right, so there we have our truck. And again, tab and slot construction, a lot easier this way than on the locomotive. Boom, everything comes off like that. Pull that thing apart, your axles are gonna come right out. Screwdriver, okay, little tiny wee Phillips. You're gonna take and you're gonna pull this screw out. Okay, everything goes together really well. It's not as hard uh, as it seems. It's actually very straightforward. The thing's put together quite well. Drop that screw there. Of course, remember that you're dealing with a, a, a speaker here, so it is magnetized. These screws are gonna stick to it. Just make sure you get everything separated out nicely. Just like that, I'll grab that with the tweezers. And out that comes. Okay, the speaker comes off as its own assembly. Check out the orientation. You've got these little tabs. They sit down on these contacts. So when you put this thing back together, make sure those tabs are sitting in the right spot. And as I said, you gotta get this tape off of here. So pretty straightforward. Just get under one edge, get under the other edge, pull that tape back off the chassis. There's only a screw on one side. So you don't have to expose the screw over here. It sits over a post, but there is a screw right here that we have to get at. So that screw comes out as well. You just want to get it out of the way so you can get at that worm gear there. So we'll flip it around this way. Then it's going to be a lot easier for you guys to see. Set that down like that, and again, get your little flat bladed screwdriver down in there, and you're gonna pop those clips. Like that, make sure I'm nice and straight here, I'm not messing anything up. And this one's being a pain in the butt for some reason. And there. Okay, so again, clip comes out, hold that worm gear so your bushings don't bugger off. 
and there you go. We'll get this truck pulled apart, and then I'll show you why we have this harmonic problem. So the design of this truck is such that you've got these two pins that the contact strips sit over the top of. Um, what that's doing is it's holding this thing in nice and rigid. Now all the other, like the Dash 840CM for instance, the contact strips tend to float a little bit, which gives the truck um, the ability to flex. This, because of this design, the truck can't flex. This is pressing up against your contacts. This is sitting in the chassis. The truck is rigid, being held from two separate points. Even though it pivots here, it's still being held in the vertical plane in two separate points. So what we have to do is we have to get our knife blade underneath our contact strips. Okay, and you're gonna gently pry them off like this. Okay, once we get those off, we note our two pins, but there's also these tabs right here. There's a tab here and there's a tab here. And what they do is they make sure that this doesn't travel anywhere. So this is a serious overkill um, engineering thing here. What we wanna do is we wanna remove this tab, this pin, this tab, make this smooth so that our contact strip pivots on here. So if it pivots on here, we're gonna make sure that we're still getting our electrical conductivity here, but it's gonna be able to float up and down this way. So the truck can move like this and our, our uh, contact strip can float. That's gonna ensure that our axles are both always on the ground. The reason we're getting that weird coffee grinder noise is a harmonic vibration from the axle not hitting the rail. So it's a simple matter of, out comes the blade, Okay, and we're just gonna trim that off just like that. This off real quick. Just like that. Okay, and then we'll take this pin off. Just like that. Get that nice and smooth. Take your file, give it a quick polish. Okay, we'll quickly polish, make sure there's nothing that's gonna hold things up. Nothing's gonna interfere with this thing pivoting. Of course, you're gonna do both sides, but I'll quickly show you what the end result is here. Okay, like I said, make sure that there's nothing interfering with any pivot of this contact strip. So you got that. This is going to sit back in place like this. Get it lined up. Press it in. And you're going to see that this now has the ability to ride up and down. Now your axle is going to be pressing here. You see that it pushes down. Your other axle is going to be pressing here. You've got your uh, contacts inside the chassis that press down here. All right, this truck's been modified. We'll quickly throw it back together here. So axle drops in, axle drops in, and side frame assembly snaps over the top. Go from the gear tower end. For whatever reason, it seems to work better if you do it that way. Snap truck is put back together. I'll show you quickly how to put this thing back together. Very, very simple. We'll put the back truck in. It's the more complicated one. So you're going to get the uh, truck sitting down here, nice, flat, oriented, the right direction. You're going to, let's see if we can do this right so you can see this. You're going to come over the top and you're going to gently set that down so that your worm gear assembly is lined up. Now, you're gonna see that it sits into slots. Those bushings sit into slots. Make sure that everything's lined up nicely like that. You're gonna take one of your clips, goes over one side and it's gonna line up center. And it's a simple matter. Once you get it lined up where you want it, just like that, I'm gonna hold one side, press the other side until I get that snap. And then I'm going to press this side down until I get that snap. All right. Make sure everything functions properly. You've got swing in the truck. All right. To get our, uh, our DCC board, our sound board, and all that kind of good stuff back on, 
Take note that you've got contact strips here and you've got holes in the chassis, two holes in the chassis here. These contact strips go down through those holes and then this side of the decoder sits over top of a peg on the chassis right here. So we'll get everything lined up. Your contact strips gent gently drop down through those holes. Okay, line that thing up until it sits over top of there. Now, I've had good luck in the sense that the screw never comes out of these boards when I do this. So if that screw's still in there, it's a simple matter of getting her tightened back up. And that's gonna hold that board in there nicely. Tape, back over the chassis here. Tape, back over the chassis there. All right, last thing to do, get that speaker put on. So remember, you've got these tabs, they sit on these contact strips. Uh, because this is magnetic, sometimes it's easier to actually put the screw into the housing like this first. Okay, and we'll just do one side real quick. So that drops down there. Get everything lined up the way it should be. Get that screw started. One side done. Don't tighten it up all the way. You want to be able to pivot this thing if you have to. Uh, okay, second screw in there like that. Get her lined up and tightened down like that. Get that second truck all modified and installed in the chassis and give it about an hour's runtime. you're going to notice a massive difference in the running characteristics of the model. Of course, this is a pretty involved modification. It's certainly not for everybody, but for me, well worth the effort. I'm going to leave you guys with a detouring number two, running over the crow's nest sub, eastbound, about to dive into tunnel number six. If you dig the video, like, subscribe, and if you want even more content, maybe think about joining up and becoming a channel member. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.